winners here tonight, and so we'll call them up and present you another certificate. I'd like for them to come and uh, be recognized uh, and shake your hand tonight. And so we'll start uh, our, our high school student, uh, Yulia Price, is not able to be here tonight, but she of her parents is going to be here to represent her. Price is going to come and give him a certificate and shake his hand, be a proud dad. And uh, she is, I think, uh, conducting the orchestra tonight or something. Uh, yes, sir. She's in uh, Charlotte Symphony Youth Orchestra. Right. So, uh, I'm to shake your hand if you'll convey that appreciation. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
combined emergency system has never earned the uh, designation of uh, excellence in financial reporting prior to this. Before merger, some years before merger, Kings Mountain uh, District Schools did in fact uh, submit their financials for comprehensive uh, achievement and were awarded that. That had ended prior, immediately prior to the, the merger. But this is the first time that the merge system has uh, achieved that designation. Uh, to give you a perspective of that, there are 3,908 governmental entities in the United States that have achieved that, that designation as of the last reporting on the GFOA's website. In North Carolina, there is one university or college 52 counties, about 50% of the counties have it, uh, 12 enterprise funds, 86 municipalities, one public employee benefit system, 32 school systems, two special districts, and the state has this designation. Uh, it's our pleasure to uh, again present this to you in reasonable grantee tonight just for reference is that you have to submit your uh, report by December 31st and it only takes four to six months for that review process at the state level to, or actually at the national level, to run its course to determine whether or not your, your financials qualify for that and we just now got the report back. We submitted it, uh, as you know, back in December and we just now got the designation. But uh, these people are the ones responsible for that and it's, it's our pleasure. pleasure
I do have major concerns about North Shelby School. I feel like the school is going downhill very quickly. We have lost about 20 staff members from North Shelby School this year alone. We're going to lose at least six more to maybe 10 more at the end of the summer that are not going to return. That's over half of North Shelby School that we've lost in a year's time. It takes a very special person with a, very, with a passion to teach these kids and put them on the right path. And we're losing highly qualified teachers and replacing them with teachers that are not highly qualified. We're getting teachers that are coming in at lateral entry that are not special education teachers. For instance, my son's teacher, she's a good person. She has a drama major. She's not a special education teacher. She's coming in lateral entry. She's one of the ones that may not come back to Fort Shelby next year. We need to start looking into why we're losing great teachers and associates and staff from North Shelby School. These kids deserve the best of the best. My son is severely autistic. He's ADHD. He's ADHD. He's a ball of work. I mean, he's very difficult to manage, maintain, and teach. And this year they have focused primarily on his behavior because there have been so many changes in this classroom alone. He has gone through two teachers and about three TAs. The worst thing you can do for a child that is severely autistic is have change. We need to find a way to keep these teachers at North Shelby School. Something is going on. I keep hearing complaints that it's the administration. I also feel like if you put the wrong person in the wrong classroom, they're going to fail to begin with. The only reason I know how to handle an autistic child is because of my son. Before him, I would be totally lost and my child would get hurt. It takes a lot to know. I have tried to get other teachers that are very highly qualified to come from other schools back to North Shelby School. And I get the same thing. School's so broken. I don't want to get mixed up in the drama. I don't want the bad reputation. I'm begging you to have a full investigation to find out exactly what is going on in my son's school. He's eight years old, and now is the time to put him on the right path and keep him out of an institution when he grows older and have him at home or living in a facility where he can get help and live by himself. I'm begging you, please, if he, when he does have a highly qualified teacher, which he has before, he is excelled. But if you keep putting teachers that are not highly qualified in my son's classroom, he's going to continue to backslide and spiral. These kids, I mean, my son could be one of these kids 15 years from now if we make the right decision. You bring my son in here now, he's going to tear the building down. And a lot of people are going to get hurt in the process. You've got to know what you're doing. So I'm begging you to work with the school officials, find out what's going on, up the standards as far as the teachers being hired for my son's school. That way they can help these kids instead of battling behavior after behavior after behavior. We've got to get those things under control. Consideration of the minutes of the April 28th closed personnel session. What's the pleasure of the board?
have a section of that. Is there a second? Second. We moved and seconded to approve the minutes of April 28, 2014, closed personnel session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. On to globally competitive students. U.S. News and World Report rankings. Stephen Fisher. Fisher. Anywhere? Double team. Yes, sir. Buck Bowles, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we enthusiastically come to you tonight. Uh, we always like to come and, and talk, to, talk to you, but uh, we got great news to share. Uh, that makes it exciting. As you're aware, um, U.S. News and World Reports have ranked high schools all across the nation, uh, and specifically in the state. We'd like to come to you tonight to share some success. Uh, we know we have great high schools. We know we have great schools in our school system. And we also know that we have great high schools. And it's, it's affirming when um, you have reports that, that note this and that show the success. So we'd like to come to you tonight, talk to you just for a few minutes about this. I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview, and I'm going to let Dr. Ware talk about the specifics, and then uh, we'll answer some questions for you. Um, so you might ask, what is the U.S. News and World Report High School Rankings? What is that all about? Uh, well, this is a, and you're familiar with the, the uh, U.S. News and World Reports, um, they have a system of ranking all high schools in the United States. Uh, their research and the, the rankings and the statistical data is done by the American Institutes for Research. Uh, the rankings are based on the ability to produce measurable academic outcomes to demonstrate educational success for all students. When you rank things, we could um, you hear our commentary in radio about people saying what's the best, giving their opinion. And part of the U.S. News and World Report's rankings is the ability to have produce measurable academic outcomes. Uh, this uh, report analyzed 31,242 public high schools uh, representing all 50 states. Uh, three steps in that process. Step number one is to determine the school's student performance and the, that the school students perform better than the statistical expected for the average student in that state. What that means in short is that the students in the, excuse me, students in that school were performing better than the average student in that state. Um, step two was to determine whether the school's least advantaged students were performing better than the average student in that state. Um, and the information, I believe we provided some information front for you from the U.S. News and World Report. Uh, in that information, they, they, they insisted that schools that didn't qualify, meaning uh, step one and step two, didn't, didn't go any further. Um, and then step three, if the schools passed those first two steps, they were eligible for step three, which was the college readiness performance indicator. Um, just to give you a little context of this study in terms of scale, um, of uh, over 31,000 schools that Dr. Fisher mentioned, only 27% of all those schools nationally performed well enough based on the criteria to earn a bronze silver So to get one of those designations is quite an accomplishment. Um, in North Carolina, um, this ranking included over 519 schools. Only two schools in the entire state received the gold award. Only 34 in our state received the silver. And 61 received the bronze designation. So only 18%, a little over 18% of all the schools in our state received an award in the 2014 ranking. So um, the ranking is based on a methodology that looks at four different criteria. One, they look at the student-teacher ratio <coughs> of the school. They also look at what they call college preparedness, if they generate a college readiness index. And they do that by looking at the AP performance, advanced placement exam performance, of seniors in the year the data is analyzed. Um, they look at how many seniors took AP exams and how many passed. And they generate an index. Um, and I thought it was important to note that only schools in North Carolina and nationally who had a college readiness index of a, over 18 
high enough for a silver or gold medal selection. And so the, they also looked at algebra proficiency. So in our state, that would be algebra 1 EOC data. And because this data for the 14, 2014 ranking comes from 11 12, um, we, you'll see if you looked on the website, you would see uh, NA because in 2011 12, we were transitioning from core English to EOC. So that explains why that data is missing. Um, but we are glad to report tonight that two of our high schools were ranked um, in the 2004 ranking first, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Grace and uh, Ms. Honeycutt here recognizing um, Crest High School, they were ranked 16th um, in the 2004 ranking. They received a silver award designation. Their student-teacher ratio was 15 to 1. Their college readiness index was 27. Remember, it had to be over 18 to receive a designation. And their algebra composite was 3.1. So we're happy they're here tonight. And also, Kings Mountain High School was also ranked at 33rd in our state. They received a silver award designation as well. Uh, they had the same student-teacher ratio. Um, their college readiness index was 18. And their algebra proficiency um, composite was 3.1. And Dr. Fisher's going to come back and give you a little bit of story from the perspective of that one.
have that students that are deemed medically fragile uh, can request a waiver or a testing exception from the North Carolina Park Department of Public Instruction to exempt them from testing. Um, this is for students that have serious medical or, or other reasons not to test. Uh, and this happens great three through uh, 12. It's an application of the BPI approved that. There's not a lot in our district. Uh, and, and, um, generally speaking, when those are approved, the student just does not have to take the test. They are exempted from the test. Uh, DPI is continuing that practice, but however, this year with the to achieve is grade three.
personnel. So for the workers to take an action on it. further discussion. I just, I just noticed we only have a couple of work sessions. We can possibly get maybe some entry on into the year as we see fit and you can change that. Any further discussion?
Kings Mountain High School is a project that we're partnering with. Mr. Fogel, he is purchasing the greenhouse. Mr. Ramey is providing the masonry and base and flooring. Uh, giving an update there currently. The site has been cleared and the, uh, the footings have been poured. Uh, hope that's some masonry work again this Thursday and hopefully have this completed by June 30th. Um, Marion renovations, again, they're part of the uh, pre-K licensure process. Softball dressing facility at uh, Kings Mountain High School. Uh, foundations in. Plumbers have been on site uh, doing their uh, blues uh, slab uh, plumbing work. And then uh, the regrouping project at the business center uh, should be completed this week. Uh, we have a number of projects listed there under the encumbered section that will be uh, begin after June 6th. We'll be replacing the two air handling units in the gym at Shelby High School. Uh, we have two schools that will be painted this summer, uh, number three elementary and Boston Elementary. Um, the Kings Mountain Middle School gym renovations, we plan to begin that on June 9th, and we'll basically take the entire summer to uh, complete that project. North Elementary uh, gym there currently has vinyl tile. With the uh, rubberized flooring. Uh, and also, we plan to uh, upgrade the fire alarm and press hospital this summer. Uh, currently, we have two roofing projects planned for this summer a re roofing of the flat uh, roof section at Kaiser, as well as the Canadian building at uh, Grand Elementary. We would also share with you uh, Crest High School last Friday, we lost a transfer. It's a transformer that uh, provides service for the athletic complex there. Uh, that's going to need to be replaced. Uh, that will be a uh, major uh, repair force. Uh, Mr. Bevel, they're still working on uh, finalizing the replacement plan for that. So uh, we may actually have to increase our service there since several the years we have added uh, facilities there. So that will help out the remaining project for this year. Any questions?
questions and I don't have to answer questions you may have tonight. Mr. Chairman, more questions you have during the month. Sure. 
class from our office all of those flavors to choose from. Is there, ever, is there any consideration of making the option of a small bottle of water, not, not this size, but a small one for the elementary age? I just know that there's a lot of elementary kids that are not getting a beverage. They're eating their meal and then going to the water fountain afterwards. Actually, that is correct. At this point in time, um, the law does not, our finances do not allow us to give a bottle of water to the students, but the law does encourage and require us to provide a, a cup of water if there is not a water fountain available to the students. So many times the students can give a glass, a little glass of water because they have water fountains available to them. That is something that's growing in popularity in our schools across the nation is beginning to become aware that water has a nutritional integrity and nutritional value just as water as you see with this. So those are some of the things that you'll see that come in, in the future. It'll just be a cup. It'll just be a cup. It kind of won't be a bottle. The price difference between a cup and a bottle would be probably two cents versus 13 or 14 cents. So it would not be for any cost effective for us to do that. But we could offer Sign up sheets here behind 